Hey, Beth and Robin. How you doing? Hello. Doing great. Great to be here. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining us and thanks for giving us your tips for the summer. Um, and thank all of you for being here with us. We, whether you're watching it live or you're watching the video after the fact, um, we hope it's a blessing to you and your family. All right, I'll be back. Okay. okay. I'm Beth Jameson. And I'm Robin Parker. <laughs> and we're excited to visit with y'all this afternoon. Sixth grade in Tennessee, great. Um, so I guess we're gonna start with homeschooling year round and then go on to some tips to transitioning back to the school year. So I'll go ahead and get us started. But yeah, be dropping in the chat um, where you're from and what grade, that would be great. So homeschooling year round, um, why would you wanna homeschool year round? Well, first off, it's great to continue with math and language arts during the summer, especially if you have younger kids. Um, you know, they forget a lot over the summer break. And so just doing a little bit of reading, a little bit of math over the summer is a great idea. Um, you can continue your current curriculum if you have, um, you know, curriculum you're working through. You can just continue that over the summer or you can do something different during the summer, maybe like a summer reading program, maybe math games, different things like that. So um, whether you homeschool, um, use the same curriculum all year round or if you just do something a little bit different during the summer, it's a good idea to continue with something. So I was thinking about benefits to year round schooling. So th these are some that I came up with. Maybe y'all can think of some others. If you think of some others, you can drop them in the chat. Um, the first thing is that your kids don't forget as much over the long summer break, you know, because their minds are more active and you don't have to review as much at the beginning of the school year because you've been doing some of it over the summer. So kids don't forget as much. Um, another benefit to your around homeschooling is you can spend time outside when it's nice, you know, like in the spring and fall when it's cool, you can take a break, <laughs> you know, and do school when it's hot in July, <laughs> too hot to do anything except maybe go to the pool, right? <laughs> um, and then, you know, when it's cold, so, you know, you can kind of plan your schooling around when it's nice outside. Um, so we did a lot of that. We, you know, kind of took our breaks when it was nice outside. Um, another benefit is um, you can travel when places aren't busy, busy. So maybe you want to go to the beach. Well, in the summer, the beach is crowded, right? So if you go in the spring or the fall, you may be not as crowded, you might get better rates, <laughs> all of that kind of thing. So you can, you know, kind of plan your trips and your vacations around not the busy season and save money and not have as many people there. So um, that is a great thing to do. Heidi says she does school year round. That's great, lighter summer schedule. Yeah, and take breaks when you want to or need to. That's great. Um, another benefit to year round schooling is maybe you can take more time off at Christmas. I, I have some friends that have taken off like the whole month of December. Like um, they go on break for Thanksgiving and just stay on break until after Christmas. So, um, and then you can spend, you know, that month maybe focusing on making gifts for people or focusing on the meaning of Christmas, you know, spending more time with family and that kind of thing. So um, that's another benefit to year round schooling. Um, another one that I thought of was it might help prevent mom burnout. <laughs> Because that can be a real thing, right, Robin? <laughs> so, um, you know, as you know, as moms, we need a break just as much as the kids do. So, um, you know, if the mom gets a break during the year, then maybe we don't get as tired and frustrated with it, right? <laughs> so that can be a good thing, too. Um, and, and you can maybe plan something fun to do for yourself during that time off, too, uh, to help prevent burnout. Um, another benefit to year round schooling is um, it can help with scheduling habits like, you know, getting up early, having a school routine going, you know, if you have this big, long, you know, two, three months off, then trying to get kids back into the routine um, can be difficult. So it can kind of make that process a little bit less difficult of trying to transition uh, back to school. So, um, okay, let's see. Uh, keep those tips coming if you have any tips for year-round schooling as well. Um, so some tips for year-round schooling for high schoolers. Um, 
just three credits are recommended um, during the summer for high schoolers um, because it is a shorter period of time than a regular semester. So we recommend just three credits. Um, and so the way you could split credits if you have high, high schoolers is they could do a half credit in the fall and then a quarter credit in the spring and a quarter credit in the summer. Um, so that's kind of how that would work. Another thing that high schoolers could do is take a dual enrollment class during the summer or maybe a couple, you know, dual enrollment classes during the summer and that's a good way to get both your high school um, credit in and some college credit at the same time. So that is a great idea as well. All right, I am going to share my screen and show you guys how to um, report year-round schooling. So we've got a sample uh, John Smith account here. Um, I, this is for a fifth grader. Um, so we'll, you'll see, we've, this, is, this is just a pretend person here <laughs> that, we, that we have, a fake account. But um, So you'll see we've got the fall and spring grades already entered. So if you're going to do um, some classes during the summer, what you would do is you would click Add Semester, and then you would pick Summer Semester, and just add that in. So you'll see the fall, the spring, and the summer. So, and like we talked about earlier, you can continue what you were already doing. So here we've got, you know, just this, the Not Grass America the Beautiful. You could continue that. Um, if you were going to um, do something different, you could add a semester and say maybe instead of learning language arts through literature, which you were doing, you might say summer reading program or something like that. I hope you guys can see that. So then you've got your fall, your spring, and then whatever you're doing during the summer showing up here. Now that's kind of how you would do it for, um, for elementary. So now if you have a high schooler, let's see if it'll let me go in here. Okay, so here we've got a ninth grader. So maybe the ninth grader um, didn't quite get done with algebra. You know, math is sometimes a hard class and hard to get through. So, um, so maybe they did, like we talked earlier, half credit um, in the fall. And then let's say they did a quarter credit in the spring. And then you can add a semester and do a quarter credit in the summer. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, so we've got fall, spring, and summer. So that's kind of how you would do it for high schoolers. Um, you could also do like a quarter credit in the fall and then a half credit in the spring or something like that. That would totally work as well. So see, I can't see the chat while I'm sharing. So let's go back over here. Um, any questions about entering um, courses in Apple Core and how that works? If you do, just drop them in the chat. And Robin, do you have some tips about uh, some anything to share about what you did during the summer with your kids? Uh, it would depend on their age. When they were younger, um, I really didn't um, enter anything new for the summer. But like you said, maybe we, we participated in a summer reading program, or maybe it was just like our summer activities. So we're outside more. We're going to learn. Um, you know, bats one year because we had a couple of bats that we got to see fly around our backyard um, for several nights in a row. So the boys were really interested in that. So I guess for us, it was a lot of nature studies, if you wanted to label it that way. Fireflies, we learned about those. Uh, tree frogs, with tree frogs around us. So it was really whatever the boys kind of had a, an interest in, that's what we would do. Um, over the summer and we're such an outdoor family so a lot of it revolved around nature studies i guess you could say right yeah and we did similar things we usually did a summer reading program we re usually had some sort of math games and and then um i just let my kids you know read fun books that they were interested in rather than you know whatever the curriculum said <laughs> you know that right. that was their chance to you know pursue their interests more so than than during the school year um, and then we usually did, you know, something else besides reading and math, whether it was, um, you know, working on something that they were maybe struggling with, kind of reviewing that, that kind of thing. Um, and then like letting them pursue their interests in different things. Um, I think we did some, 
um, coding kind of things. When my, one of my kids was in high school and graphic design, we did some of that during the summer. Um, and then just, you know, kind of anything that you don't finish during the school year, you can always carry it over into the summer. And, um, you know, with Home Life Academy, you do have a, a year to get your schoolwork in. So, you know, the school year is about to start August 1st. But, um, you know, this is a great time to talk about year round schooling because, um, you know, maybe you can just take it easy this year, take some breaks in the spring and the fall and finish up during the summer and you have all the way until next year at this time to finish up. So um, maybe that gives you some freedom and flexibility as you're looking towards starting your school year this year. All right. So if you have any. Oh, let's see. Let me look at the question Q and A's. Um, you do your 180 days from August to May, interest-led activities. Okay, yeah, Spanish, that's a great thing to do. Uh-huh, yeah, so for sixth grade, it would be just like um, I showed with the fifth grader. You can just enter that as a um, summer course and um, just say the art, you know, list a separate art class during the summer in Spanish during the summer with the online program that you were using. That would be great. Um, is it okay to just include summer work with the fall semester? Um, so technically summer goes with the year before. I forgot to say that earlier, but yeah, technically summer goes with the year before. If you start just a little bit early, I know some people start kind of mid-July and you can just sort of add that to your, your school year starting in August. That's fine to do um, as well. But if you're going to do, you know, a decent amount over the, over the year, I would, you know, probably include that with the previous year rather than including it with the upcoming year. I hope that makes sense. Right. So if you think of if you think of any more questions, drop them in the chat or in the Q and A, and um, hope that helps. Well, what I was going to say, Beth, for high school, um, mm -hmm. so if you, they were going to do like my son. We did that when he was in high school. My oldest, um, anatomy and physiology. So we actually kind of started in May, but we finished up around July. I mm -hmm. still put that as a summer semester, but. Right. But it did go on his 10th grade year, not his 11th grade year, not starting with the 11th grade. So, right, because it, go, it goes with the year before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, so. But, um, so anything else we need to bring up, I guess, about your, I mean, yeah, year round schooling or? Yeah, I think just if any other questions come up, and you know, we can go on to tips to getting started with your school year. So, um, even if you were to, you know, year round school, um, there are some ways you can transition either into your new school year, you know, starting with the fall, or you could call it your new homeschooling season if you wanted to call it that. So as Beth mentioned, August 1st is the deadline to register with Home Life Academy. Um, it's not that you can't register after that, but you know, the fees are going to increase, but August 1st is the deadline. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have to start on August 1st. You just need to be registered. So you could wait a couple of weeks. You can decide, you know what, well, we start in September. I have um, some friends, that's what they do. They start after Labor Day. So the choice when to actually start your new school year is up to you. Um, I know a lot of friends who start when the local schools start back. Um, we never did. We waited a couple of weeks to maybe end of August. Um, and when my boys were younger, elementary, even young middle school, we still had a tradition. <laughs> when our local school started, we went to the park that day because there was nobody there. <laughs> so that was our big tradition for a few years. But yeah, so um, it's up to you when do you want to start your school year. Just remember, you do need 180 days in a school year. So um, you can sit down with your family and decide, hey, do we want to start after, um, you know, Labor Day or are we going to stick with more with our area where we're going to start sometime in August? That's up to you. The choice is yours. And like I do say, you might want to wait a couple of weeks. I mean, we did just because it was so nice to be out and about when everybody else was in school. <laughs> All right. So another thing you can plan, and Beth, I'm sure can back me up with this. Um, Maybe planning your routine. Now, I don't mean schedule every moment of the day. What I do mean is it does help, like Beth was saying, to kind of transition into this routine. So if you have been off and on during the summer, 
you know, bedtimes might be a little later, sleeping in. But with the fall activity starting up, maybe your, your family is more of a family where, okay, that was summer bedtime, but, you know, this is school year, this is what we do. So I recommend a tip is maybe a week or two before you start your first day of school, so to speak, um, start transitioning into that new bedtime. Um, help develop a bedtime routine, even with the, now we know with little kids, you know, bath time, you know, tuck them in, maybe read a bedtime story. That's what we always did with our boys. As my boys, as our boys got older, um, then we would help them come up with a bedtime routine. Um, I will say, even though my boys were young teenagers, my husband still read aloud to them. They still liked that at night when, I mean, it wasn't every night like when they were young. But when they did get older, it was more of, um, you know, teenagers want to stay up later. And then, you know, they're sleeping in. And that's just, you know, the nature of, I mean, teenagers, that's just how they are. Well, we would come up with a plan. So you can sit down and discuss with your teenager, okay, you know, here, here is a bedtime routine. Here's when we, you know, lights need to be off. And so not only a bedtime routine, when are we going to, you know, go to bed, but what time are we getting up? How are we starting our day? When are we starting our day? And again, you don't have to schedule every little moment and schedules can change, but it's just kind of nice to start off with a plan. And as I said, you can always change it. So also a tip I, um, I really, I would do, and my friends would do, um, digital calendar or, you know, paper, pencil calendar, but start planning your fall activities. And I mean things that, you know, um, church activities, youth group activities that you already know about. Um, you know, uh, scout meetings, 4-H meetings that hey, you've already been told. If you get those, already in your schedule, in your plan, then that helps you to sort of plan, you know, the rest of your day. You know, when are we going to do our lessons? You know, are we going to start at 9 a.m.? Are we going to go until, you know, 1 p.m.? What are we going to do? Are we going to have a scheduled lunch break? So that really is up to, you know, you and your family how that works. Um, of course, with younger kids, you know, maybe they need a nap time. And if you have older siblings who don't have a nap time, what do they do? What do you want them to do during the younger ones' nap times? And also, don't forget to schedule, you know, park days, um, you know, play dates. And I know it sounds a little weird, teenagers and play dates, but they need some get-together time also outside if you go, you know, if you go to a co-op or a tutorial. You know, they need some, they need some get-together time too. So, a tip for I have is just plan, you know, your schedule. When are we getting up? When are we going to bed? What are some activities we know we're going to have? You know, every Wednesday night is youth group. We go, we go there. Here's the time. Because as I told uh, my oldest, who did not like a schedule, I promise you, and my youngest one, which is born that way. But if you have a general plan, an idea, then you, you're not always, oh wait, when, what, oh, I forgot, I forgot we have scout meeting that night. Oh no, oh no. Trust me, I, I've lived through it. <laughs> it's just nice <laughs> to have, start to get that planning down. And like I said, a digital calendar, an actual you know, paper and pencil one, that would be really good too. Um, as I was saying about a routine and when to start your school, your school year, um, your homeschooling. So if you don't want to start on the first day with all of your subjects, you can take a couple of weeks to gradually add in your subjects if that's how your family is structured. So say you have, you know, middle school and high school, even, you know, upper elementary. The first day, it may not be, okay, we're going to do, you know, history and, or, you know, math and science. Maybe this week, we're just going to gradually start in with math. And then in a couple of weeks, we're going to add, you know, social studies. So again, you know, you can try some new things if you haven't, you know, some of these ideas are new to you, but you know your family best. So, you know, and the good news is, like I always tell homeschoolers, it's okay, you have a plan, it can always change. It's just always nice to start with one. Okay, so something else. Um, so we've got our planning as much as we can get done. Some of you may know, I mean, you may already have your fall semester ready to go. Uh, I was kind of in between from 
I'm not sure what we're doing to, oh, we've got it all planned out. But let's not forget, let's kick off something, you know, what are we going to do to kick off our new year? So one thing you can do is get together with other homeschool friends, have a kickoff party. If you all are going to, or it doesn't matter if they are or not, if you're going to start on Monday, maybe that weekend have a little get together. You all can go to the park for a potluck, you know, picnic. They can come over to your house, you know, for an ice cream supper, but something, you know, just to show the kids, hey, here's what we're doing. This is our big kickoff. We're going to start our new year. And the kids can get involved. They can help plan it. They can make physical invitations to, you know, to send to people or virtual, help plan a menu if you're going to have people over because it really helps to get the kids involved. So something just to kind of, hey, let's kick off our new season or our new homeschool year. That's always a fun thing to do. And then the first day. Now, even though we don't, we're homeschool, it's, it's fun to have the kids plan the first day. What kind of breakfast? Plan a special breakfast that day. My family was big into cooking. So we'd go to the library, get cookbooks, and we'd find recipes, and we would decide what, how do we want to start our first day? Now, if you're thinking, no, I don't think I want to do breakfast, that's okay. A special lunch, a special dinner, just something for the kids. And there's a lot of learning there. They have to research, they're reading, uh, writing, all sorts of skills they're learning for planning for that day. And let them plan a special outfit. And you can take pictures. You can actually have them make little cutouts, you know, uh, hold up a sign, you know, first grade, or hey, I did it with my teenagers. I took a picture the first day my oldest started a due enrollment class because that was pretty exciting. He was 16. So, you know, you have a special, you know, corner, photo corner, or just go outside in your yard. Or you could hold up a sign if they wanted to, you know, new homeschool season, but something just to show, hey, we are, we have transitioned. This is a new year, new me, whatever. You know, we have some, we can show, look back and see our different pictures, our quote school pictures. So again, with that, it just helps for, let the kids have some involvement in it. What are you going to wear the first day? What are we going to do? You know, what, how are we going to start off our brand new homeschool year? So those are just some tips that I have done, my friends have done. And oh, and one thing I do want to say, and I'm, I'm sure Beth will back me up. When you're planning a schedule, schedule in your housekeeping. And that's what we did. From the time my boys were three or four years old, they would help fold washcloths. By the time they were five, they would empty the, the bathroom little waste basket all the way up to, um, you know, my boys can cook, clean, they can do all that. And we had a schedule to take turns. But I have found um, it really helps. When, you, when are you going to mop the kitchen floor? Or when is it going to get mopped? When are you going to clean the bathroom? You know, and that is part of homeschooling. That's not taking, it might be taken away from sitting working through a math book, but those are life skills. And as a friend of mine will say, and hers, her last one just graduated, she would tell people, I'm not raising children, I'm raising adults. So it's okay. And by the time mine were 12 years old and they were doing their own laundry. So, you know, don't forget, we, we, we got to schedule in the housekeeping so we don't feel so overwhelmed. So those are some of my tips, like I said, that I did and um, my friends would do. So, oh, we do have a question there. Okay, I think we answered that one though, didn't we? Um, yeah, I think she's saying if we if they don't do full days, like um, I, I think it's okay to enter that in Apple Core. You may not enter attendance days unless it's the you know four hours. Although you know, remember anything. So much of life is school. You know, um, you know if you go swimming for two hours and then you know the kids read for an hour and you do you know one other thing. That's your you got your four hours in. You know, so it's not hard to get like a four hour day. You know, um, and so you know a lot of homeschoolers. You know, kind of you you are homeschooling year round if you think about it because you know you're doing you know PE and reading or whatever you know there are things your kids are doing that could count. Um, so you know you don't have to be a stickler for exactly four hours, but um, you know I think if if you're doing things during the summer, you can feel free to put that in on the uh, on Apple Core. You don't have to, but you can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
absolutely, yeah. So, okay, anything else you have to add? Yes. Yeah, so I, I did, we did what you said about kind of easing into the school year and starting with a couple of subjects and took like two or three weeks to kind of ease back into it. We did that. I think that was helpful. Um, and then um, one other thing I thought of too was um, school supplies. You know, as homeschoolers, you don't go through school supplies anywhere near as much, but sometimes it's fun to get new pens or <laughs> you know, new notebooks. You could still go buy the new pens and the new notebooks and, you know, have something fun and new. <laughs> Oh, yes. As you start the school year, stickers, crayons, you know, things, little things <laughs> like that. Yeah. But, um, I'm trying to think if there's any thing. High school, of course, if now if your kids are all high schoolers, of course, it's going to be a little different from when they were younger. But I mean, you can still, they're old enough. They can, you all can start now, you know, planning what are we going to do the first day? When are we starting? You know, um, you know, what subjects, how are we going to structure our day? I know a lot of my friends there who have teenagers now, um, if they're older teenagers, sometimes they work during the day. So maybe they're not doing their quote school. Maybe they're not working on that until late afternoon, early evening. So it will, again, it's your family, you know, but it's okay. Um, the full, the four hours, you know, we don't have to sit there eight to 12. I mean, that can be throughout the day. And I know some people are always concerned about with high school years. Like I said, I mean, I have friends, they have older height, they're 16, 17, uh, you know, junior, seniors, they have a job, they might work in the mornings, but then they're doing their, their, um, you know, their schoolwork, so to speak, after that. And, um, you know, especially if they're athletes, you know, sometimes you're gonna have to work around that schedule too. So I just like to point that out that, High schoolers, it can be a little different. <laughs> all right. So I guess that's really all I have to say about transitioning to your new season or your new year. Yeah, so all of all of y'all who've commented, sixth grader, first and second grader, second, fourth, sixth, um, kindergarten, um, best wishes to you guys as you get started on your new school year this year. Absolutely. I'm excited for excited for you guys to get started. And if you have any questions, feel free to call call us. Somebody's here who can help you. Oh, that's wonderful. Can you actually, can you go ahead and give us the, the preferred email if people have questions specifically about summer learning? What's a good email or phone number to call? Um, so you can email me at beth at homelifeacademy.com. Ann Robin? R-O-B-Y-N at homelifeacademy.com. And of course, you can always, um, you know, call Home Life Academy and, you know, they'll take, they'll get you to the right person. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you all again so much for being here. Um, and to all of you, hope your day is blessed and I hope this has been helpful to you. And join us again next month for another helpful webinar. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everybody. Bye.